Well, uh, I'd like to say thank you, Sanji, for your time. Uh, I've been really keen to uh, have a conversation with you. So I'll start out with saying how have you been and how's the family going? Um, family is amazing. It's amazing. Kids are growing up really quickly. So I suppose one um, uh, positive of of uh, the last year and a half is that I've spent more time than more time with them than I probably would have uh, had the opportunity to. So it's really, it's really from that perspective, it's been really, it's been really, really good. Uh, uh, everyone's getting on really well. I've been okay. It's been intense, but but overall very good. Thank you. I suppose adding to that, there's also been the impacts of COVID. So how have you all sort of coped with that? Added on to everything else. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, it started obviously with, with COVID last year, which was really quite amazing in terms of how it really shut down the whole world and every single operation of ours globally was a, was a challenge. And I was doing, you know, at one point I was doing 20, 20 hour plus days, literally around the clock uh, with different plants everywhere in the world trying to sort of, uh, try, trying to mitigate and manage it. We've done well compared to our peers. Uh, we did very well in all our operations. If you look at all the st- stats, um, they speak for themselves. Um, and we, did, we took every measure. I won't list all of them, but we took every measure uh, and we continue to do so. It also made us much more conscious about health in general, me personally even. But everybody, I think, became more conscious about health through this. Um, and also in terms of how we look at hygiene, how we look at uh, mental health, physical health, going forward, I think it will be there will be a lot of learnings from this, a lot of positives to take out of what was a very uh, difficult uh, period for everybody. Uh, great news about the uh, refinancing. Uh, it's obviously been a great relief for uh, all of us here in Wyala, but I'm sure also a relief to yourself. No, absolutely. It is, it is absolutely amazing news. And I'm so happy that Wyala uh, happens to be the first business where we've uh, achieved uh, a major refinancing. So it's, it's an extra special feeling given that I have such a special place for Wyla in my heart. So that's really good news. It's a lot of hard work. I mean, you know, given all the noise and all the issues, uh, it was not easy, uh, but but it was achieved in the end. And uh, it's credit to all the teams who worked very hard and um, consistently. So it's, just, it's really good. It gives now a very stable platform for the operations. Of course, the operations themselves are doing incredibly well, but also the fact that now they have stable financing means uh, we can really look to the future. So it sounds like Wyla, um, you know, has been a really key part of securing the refinancing. So how would you describe the performance of the team now compared to when you bought the plant? So when I first came to Wyla and when eventually we bought the business, I mean, I'm sure you uh, will remember it was it was quite a dark period. You know, nobody really believed that the steel operations were viable or were going to um, continue. So since then, We've spent hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, uh, uh, but it's not just about money. It's about all the efforts which have been put in and how much how much soul has gone into the operation. I mean, there's hundreds of uh, different um, initiatives and operations. As a result of all of that, the businesses are now uh, in reasonably good shape. They still, it is still, in terms of steelworks, it's still a subscale operation, and we have ambitious plans for the future. But it is now an efficient operation. It's uh, profitable, very profitable. Of course, we are helped by tailwinds as well in the steel markets and the mining markets. But even even in a down cycle, I believe the operations will now be uh, sustainable because of the various in- investments and uh, initiatives and, and improvements which have been made uh, in the business. And we're hitting, it's not just about the spreads or the margins in terms of our production volumes, we're hitting records both in mining and in steel. And there's lots and lots of uh, op- different initiatives which are all one step at a time, but all together yielding very beneficial results to, to the operations. And it's not only the steelworks and the mining operations, even the port operations are now, you know, we're getting double the productivity there. Um, so it's it's overall, I think, very satisfactory what has happened there. And of course, we're very grateful for the markets as well at the moment. It's, it's, it's just been amazing how the, the workforce at GFG here in Wyla have, you know, just made so much for success at the plant and, and it's a credit to them. What would you like to say to the workforce? Well, I mean, it's, it's all, all, all about them. Right? I mean, they, they, while I did not die because they refused to give up in the first instance, and it's not been easy even since we bought the business. We've had our uh, trials and tribulations, but they've been very committed. They've stuck with us and worked very hard throughout. And, uh, you know, it's, it's credit to them and their perseverance also that this, uh, this, this operation is now successful and has a bright future. So I would like to say congratulations to them. And, and I'll, of course, of course, big thank you for being my supporter, being GFG supporter and being part of our success. The community's been watching this situation as well, sort of outside GFG's operations. What would you like to say to the wider community of Wyala? I have a very, very special place for 
Viola in my heart. Whenever I think of Viola, even sort of uh, feels me with warmth. So, so I'm grateful and I'm um, very happy that I have this family, uh, which has supported me throughout thick and thin. And even if there's, when there's been doubt, they've supported. And uh, when there's been crisis, they've supported. And when there's good times, they've celebrated together, celebrated together with me. So, um, I. You know, just a big hug, but really quite keen to sort of do it in person. But in the meantime, a message from me is uh, uh, congratulations and thank you to them. You've obviously, you were talking about the financial investment in the plant. Um, what are some of the, you know, the improvements that have been made today? There's hundreds of uh, initiatives. It's, it's a lot of money which has gone in, but also a lot of, because like, there wasn't a, a silver bullet which would solve everything apart from, of course, building a new green steel plant, which is absolutely my ambition. But in terms of fixing the current operations, given that they were subscale, given that they hadn't been invested in for a long, long time, and all the different challenges they had, it was really a question of uh, working at it uh, in detail. So we put together you know, special teams, and they've really done a, a thorough job at identifying every single thing which could be available. Each one adds a million here, half a million there, a million there, few hundred thousand there there's various different initiatives i mean i wanted to come to my mind we implemented a new um, lance design which would really reduce the buildup of solid materials in our in our um, furnaces which basically gives us a couple of million a year there's there's lots of little examples like this in the steel business also in the mining business probably over 50, over 50 60 initiatives um, both in uh, emitite and magnetite so all of these all of these little steps uh, all add up together to make now a profitable business you're talking about green steel. Um, it's very exciting. Um, so how are the hydrogen plans uh, being pro progressing for GFG? So, Claire, you know, that's my absolute passion. It has been always uh, since I started really investing in industry and steel industry. Um, I firmly believe, I have done, and I always said it from the beginning, that what carbon was for industrialization over the last uh, couple hundred years Renewables, renewable energy and hydrogen will be for the next hundreds of years. So I, I believe we are at that pivoting point. I think it will happen quicker than everybody expects. But you can't ship hydrogen that easily. I'm mean, virtually impossible to ship hydrogen, in my, my opinion. It's too expensive, too dangerous, and it just won't happen. There are some projects for it, but I don't believe in them. I think the real point is now that you will have to use hydrogen where you produce it. So, for example, you'll have to make, use it to make steel. So it will be a much more of a compelling case for the development of industry in situ Hence, why wildlife is so special, because we have almost unlimited reserves of magnetite iron ore, which is what you need for making a BRI. In terms of renewables, there is no better place than Viola uh, and South Australia for wind and solar. It's got the best uh, attributes uh, altogether. So, so we have the raw materials. We have, this, we have the iron ore and we have the renewables. So to make hydrogen from the electrolysis of water, this is one of the best places in the world. And more importantly, the fact that we have the iron ore there means we can use it and make steel or DRI and export that rather than just uh, exporting iron ore. So the, the constellation is incredible. So I'm very excited about the prospects for hydrogen and green steel for Wyla. Yeah, look, it's, it's a very exciting time for Wyla and there's obviously a lot of conversations going on. How do you feel about that, that the attraction of other industries to our city as well as um, GFG? It's all around that uh, diversification of economy. What are your thoughts on that? That's the first thing I said when, when I started really, um, you know, when I was focusing, when I started focusing on and started looking for investments, that you can't have a city, a town being based on one single company. It's just not healthy. It's too much pressure on the company as well, and it's not healthy for the development of the people or the region. So it's very, very important, critical that we attract other um, uh, investors, other industries into Wyla. And the other point is that if we are, if we do develop Wyla into a, a green, you know, a green hub, so we have lots of renewable energy at competitive prices. We have the industrial infrastructure there. We have all the other utilities there, and we have a willing people and a willing government. There is no reason why lots of other industries can't thrive there, and they will. And especially if hydrogen starts to become a reality, I think that's critical that we attract other businesses, other industries, and and also of course infrastructure and development around that, uh, which is necessary if you want to see Wyla really being uh, a, a, you know proper industrial hub of a, of a global standard. As you know, from a council's point of view, our focus has been on improving the livability of the city of Wyala. And uh, so I'd be keen to hear, uh, you obviously physically haven't been here because of um, COVID, et cetera, but you would have seen some images around the new jetty that we've built. And obviously we talked about that when you were here last, but also the new high school, the $100 million high school, the foreshore development plan and the, the proposed new foreshore hotel. And you've got some thoughts around those developments. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, all three of those uh, are subjects which 
I've been, you know, either involved in or followed very closely from the very beginning. And I'm, I'm very proud of uh, what's happening on all three fronts. I mean, in terms of the development of Wyla, what the key key aspect is going to be, the most important aspect is going to be education and really bringing a new generation into Wyla, which means a developing our own in terms of really bring, giving giving Wyla the best chance uh, on education from schools all the way to technical colleges and universities and so on. But also um, immigration will be key as well, in my opinion. So bringing in the right people, the right skills as well to really expand Wyla and bring the next focus on the next generation. All these sort of initiatives are exactly what we need, and we need many, many, many more for Wyla to become a, a proper city, a city which uh, can support proper industrial growth and, and infrastructure. So, so I'm very happy with it. So obviously, you know, we're looking forward to you coming back to visit Wyala soon, uh, as soon as is possible with the travel restrictions. And we'd love you to come back and be, participate in another pageant. We haven't had one, obviously, because of COVID, but hopefully, fingers crossed, next year. So have you got any plans you can let us in on when you might be coming back to Wyala? I, I'm, I'm simply desperate to get there. I've been <laughs> watching, monitoring, negotiating, trying to cajole my way in for a long, long time. I'm hoping that now with the vaccination rates up, uh, you know, eighty percent and up. I think it's time that uh, things are opening up, uh, and and I will be the if you know the moment there is an opening, I'll be I'll be there in, in no time. So I, I'm very much hoping that I'll be spending Christmas in uh, in Australia. Let's see if that becomes uh, possible. But uh, irrespective, whenever I can, I will definitely be there as soon as I can. Oh, that we we'll look forward to you to visiting for sure. So let's talk about an important topic, which is obviously the Port Adelaide Football Club, <laughs> and. and um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, we'd really love to to have them back in Wales. Obviously, last last season, COVID sort of had an impact on them having a game here. Is there any chance there'll be another game um, with with Port here in Wales? Again, there's no secret that when Port came to me and I said, "Okay, you know, we will would like, they would like us to consider sponsoring." For me, it was really all about, you know, in some many ways, all about Wales. It's uh, it, you know, whether it was the development of the stadium, whether it was them doing games in Wyala, those are my main conditions in terms of uh, me participating. And I'm really happy to see that they, they you know, the, the marriage between us and Port works really well because our values are very similar. They really do care about Wyala as well. So it really is a, is a great partnership uh, from a Wyala perspective. I'm sure they'll be back. There's no question about it in my mind. As long as I'm a sponsor, Wyala will remain central, my intention, no focus uh, for, for the for Port. I remember also, obviously, I, you know, I watched most of the games with great jealousy. I wish I was uh, there in person, ex- obviously, except for the last one. But I watched all the other ones with great pleasure and, and jealousy. But I'm hoping that uh, next year I can participate myself physically. And of course, I'm hoping that we will win the grand final next year. So let's see. Just in closing out, um, is there anything you would like to say to um, to Wyla, um, and, the, and also your wonderful employees at, uh, at GFG? I can only say time and time again that I'm very proud of them, I'm, both the community and my employees. I'm very, very proud of them. Uh, I think they deserve to be congratulated for the hard work they've done. They are, it's a town which has never given up. It never will. And I think that will see that persistence is what I, I appreciate the most because it sort of marries with my own, my own values very much. And uh, I think Wala will be a great place in the future and it will be thanks to their efforts. So thank you. Congratulations. And again, once again, I'm desperate to come and spend some time there. I hope I will be able to very soon. Thank you, Sanjeev. Thank you, Glenn.